hi guys welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking so basically today we're going to handle the enterprise networking project 6 and as you can remember we've covered project 1 2 3 4 and 5 and suppose you've not accessed the classes i will leave links on the description part of the video or the first comment click on the links and get access to the projects and another option you can go to our channel Guru Tech Networking Training. Then under this section, the playlist, click on the playlists. Then scroll, scroll. Here, Enterprise Networking Projects. You click on the Enterprise Networking Projects. And uh, these are the requirements coded projects that we have so far we had our first project as the simple networking project then we had a small small office home office network then hotel management system then camp campus management system and finally bank network design and today guys we are going to look into the sixth enterprise networking project and uh, suppose you're new to this channel or even if you're not subscribed to our channel can lead us that favor click on the subscribe button like our video and share this video okay guys so without any further ado let's start we normally get projects or case studies from friends students or clients across the world and we analyze the case study design a network and implement the network based on the requirements on that case study so in this case, project six, we add a case study from a client. So let me just open the case study. This one. So this was our case study, enterprise networking project six. A trading floor support center employs 600 staffs, staff. They have recently expanded and as a result, need to move to a new building. A building has been identified, but has no network. This means that before they can move out, new network service needs to be designed and implemented in the new building. Exist existing network comprises of the following. So we have uh, the new building is expected to have three floors with two departments in each floor. Okay. So for the for example first floor we had sales and marketing department combined to have 120 users human and uh, human resource and logistic department combined have uh, 120 users and uh, in the in the second floor we had finance and accounts department combined having 120 users and also me administrator and public relations department combined had 120 floor 120 users I mean okay then finally on the third floor we had ICT department having 120 users and the server room having 12 devices okay therefore as a key member of the network team you have been tasked to design a network for the new building at this stage locally logically design is required which shows the measures that you would put in place to ensure that the new network meets the current business need and is future proofed okay so guys we have requirements here we are required to use cisco packet tracer to design and implement the network solution then number two use hierarchical model providing redundancy at every layer for example two routers and two multi-layer switches are expected to you to be used to provide redundancy Okay, the network is also expected to connect to at least two ISPs to provide redundancy and each router to the connected to the two ISPs. I think there was some grammatical errors there, but no problem. It means each router to connect to the two ISPs, okay? Each department is required to have wireless network for the users, okay? Each department should be in a different VLAN and in different subnet okay 
provided a base network of this one, carry out subnetting to allocate correct number of IP addresses to each department. All right. The company network is connected to the static public IP address internet protocol with this one. Okay. To the two internet providers. All right. Number eight, configure basic settings such as hostname, console password, enable password, banner messages, and disable IP domain lookup, right? Okay. Devices in all the departments are required to communicate with each other. With the, with the respective multi-layer switch configured for inter-villain routing, the multi-layer switches are expected to carry out both routing and switching functionality thus will be assigned ip addresses okay all devices in the network are expected to obtain an ip an ip address dyna dynamically from the dedicated dcp server located at the server room all right devices in the server room are to be allocated ip address statically all right number 13 Use OSPF as the routing protocol to advertise routes both on the routers and multi-layer switches. Okay. Configure SSH in all the routers and layer 3 switches for remote login. Okay. Number 15. Configure post security for finance and accounts department to allow only one PC, only one device to connect to a switch port. Use sticky method to obtain MAC address and violation mode shutdown number 16 configure network address translation with part part is port address translation is a part of part it's part of a NAT I mean to use the respective outbound router interface IPv4 address implement the necessary SCL rule test communication and ensure everything configured is working as expected guys this is a very long project and a very important project so we have several technologies that we are going to implement here as you can see all of these from number one to number 17 from the design to testing communication all right all right so guys let's start analyzing this case study we have read the case study and have identified that there is a company that employs 600 staff Okay, and the company has three floors First floor second floor and third floor and each floor has at least two departments and in those departments there are respective number of users Okay, or devices in this in those departments. I mean, okay all right and after designing that kind of a topology, we are required to implement some technologies. Okay. Let's start the design part. We are going to use Cisco Packet Tracer to design and implement the network solution. We are, use, we are required to use hierarchical network model. You, you know, hierarchical network model consists of access, distribution, or aggregation, and the cool layer okay so for example as you can see here we have the two routers and two multi-layer switches are expected so the two routers will be at the cool layer the two multi-layer switches will be placed at the distribution layer okay then we'll be having several access layer switches connecting to the respective departments okay so let's do that very fast i'll go back to our packet tesa and uh, and I'll choose this router, 2911 router, two of them. Let's place, place it somewhere here, two of them, okay? And I'll say this is core router one. And this is core R2 router 2 okay then we need two distribution layer switches and for the distribution layer switches guys I will choose uh, this one 3650 two of them we need two of them okay 
all right 3650 okay all right so this one i'll say this is uh i just said much less which one and this one also to be much layer switch too okay then guys we have several departments we have so we already have the core layer the distribution layer so let's implement the access layer and in the case of access layer guys we're going to reference on the number of departments so i'll open the case study we had how many departments in the first floor we had two departments second floor two and third floor two so we have six departments okay so i'll need six access layer switches take 29 60 and place it somewhere here that is first floor let's say that first floor and then second floor we also we had two And finally, third floor, we also had two departments. Okay. All right. So let's continue reading. Let's continue reading. The network is expected to connect to at least two ISPs. Okay. With each router connecting to the two ISPs. All right. So let's assume. We had ISPs routers there, two of them. And for the case of ISP, let me just choose uh, this one, 29, 11 router, that one. So this one I'll say ISP1, ISP, sorry, ISP1. And this one is ISP2. Okay, all right. So guys, this is our design. In complete design and we need to connect them using the correct cabling so let's analyze this one for the case of the routers I'll use serial connection and for the case of the routers to multi layer switches just the normal straight through cable for the case of um, multi layer switches to the access layer switches crossover cables right okay so what is remaining here is to connect them. But before that, let me name these these uh, these switches very fast. For example, this was SR. Okay. So as you can see, this is sales and marketing department, and this one is HR and uh, logistics departments, finance and accounts departments, administrative and public relations department. ICT department and server room department. Okay, all right. So let's connect them. So I will need a serial connection between the the routers. Okay, all right. So I go to connections, then choose serial with DCE. And when I click there, there is no serial port. So we need to insert a serial model on the routers. Click on the router. Click on the router and uh, turn off the router there is a button here power button turn it off and drag this hwic-2t to an empty slot then turn on the router then do for the rest also okay so we can connect them freely i take serial with dc connect here take the first interface to this one okay then serial dc again to connect here to that one connect to that one okay serial this with the dc here connect this one that one this one okay then this one also from this one to this one okay so we've connected uh, the sps successfully so now let's do connection between the routers and the multi-layer switches and in that case I'll use just to automatic just 
and finally between the multi layer switches to the access layer switches okay guys so as you can see in our topology we've implemented redundancy and each access layer switch switch is connected to at least two multi layer switches and each multi layer switch is connected to at least two routers and each the each internal router here is connected to ISPs so that is redundancy that is in redundancy okay so let's include the host devices in each department for example i need a pc a printer and an access point remember on the case study there was a point that says each department is expected to have wireless network for the user so there we need access point so a pc a printer and uh, access point Access point will connect to, let's say, a smartphone or a tablet. So let's just check a tablet here. Okay. And a laptop in each department. Okay. Then I go to access access uh, points. Choose PT. AP. PT, right? Okay. So that is the first department. Let's say it's here okay all right so what i'll do i'll copy this to all other departments so i'll do it very fast to save time Okay, guys. So as you can see, I have uh, copied all the, uh, the the required devices to each department. So what I'll do, guys, as you can see, these devices are just connected to any other access point because we've not set any password to the access points. So what I'll do, I'll do the naming very fast to save time. Okay guys, so as you can see I've named uh, for the five departments and I forgot something here. On the server room, we are not supposed to include uh, this one. I will include servers, for example, DCP server, email server, and uh, DNS server, right? Okay, so I'll do that very fast. I will delete this, this one. okay and then a print i'll remove here okay okay so this one i'll say system admin pc okay to manage the devices so here we need uh, how many servers let's say three f just for for demo purpose all right so i'll do that very fast and name them dcp server dns server and uh, email server okay so i'm done i'm done as required guys okay so what i'll do is to connect them connect them to the access layer switches and i'll do that very fast to save time also Okay, so we have uh, connected all the devices and as you can see, I'll just try to zoom out. As you can see guys, we have connected all the devices and as you can see, there's redundancy in our network. There's redundancy in our network, okay? Alright, so what I'll do guys is to identify which floor is this one, which department is this one. And I'll do that one very, very fast. So for example...
So we have identified which floors are these. I'll just say this is first floor. First floor. Okay. And this is second floor. Second floor. And finally, this is third floor. Okay. All right. So do just a minute. Okay. Now let's identify the departments. I'll do that. I'll do that very fast. Okay guys, so as you can see, I've uh, identified the flows plus the departments. So what I'll do is just to name the departments very fast. Okay. Okay guys, so finally guys, as you can see, we have identified which flows are these one plus the departments, right? For example, this is sales and marketing department, HR and logistics, finance and accounts, admin and public relations. ICT and finally server room. Okay, all right. So guys, basically, what I'll do, as you can see, these these interfaces are in shutdown state. So guys, we need to turn them on, turn them up. For layer three switch, this one, it doesn't have power supply, so we must include the power supply. I'll just click on the layer three switch and drag the sub supply I mean and place here. That's done. Come back to this one also drag the power supply and place there right okay okay so that's done they will turn up as you can see now they are oranges all right so what i'll do guys what i'll do guys also for the for the switching for the routers interfaces i'll turn them up click on the router come to config turn this one up turn on turn on Okay, guys. So, guys, basically, our design part is almost complete. So, I'll just reset so that we can receive the the normal size. Okay. So, as you can see, I'll eliminate. I will uh, identify these as the IC, uh, ISP. Let me use blue color. These will be our ISPs okay i'll name them later as we proceed okay so guys basically i think uh, this is our design and as you can see it's beautiful and uh, the network has redundancy and now we can just proceed with the configuration part and i'll just open the case study again and start reading all right so each department is required to have a different villains. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Configure basic settings. So guys, we need to start with the configuration. And for the configuration, guys, I have already highlighted few steps that we need to follow to configure this network topology here. So these are the steps that I have already highlighted. We are going to start with basic settings to all devices plus SSH on the routers and layer 3 switches okay all right so let's start with this set switch i'll click on the set switch uh, enable config t then we need to configure host name host name to be let's say sales sales switch okay and then also banner message banner MOTD. let's say Insert those two characters, let's say no unauthorized access. Okay, then what else were we asked to configure? Console password, enable password, and disable IP domain lookup. So, no IP domain lookup. 
okay then uh, len console console zero let's say password to be let's just use cisco for all the password that we'll use here okay then login exit exit i mean and now what's remaining enable password enable password to be cisco i mean cisco also right cisco okay and guys there's one thing that they forgot to mention here to encrypt all the password service password encryption okay exit all right okay so guys we've configured basic settings on that switch and any other thing that we can add at the layer two at the layer two okay so let's proceed to other remaining devices so for other remaining devices guys i will write the codes the commands on notepad and copy to all other remaining devices to save time so let me open notepad for example we need hostname enable config t okay then hostname hostname let's say this is hr switch hr switch okay then uh, line console console zero password to be cisco then login the user and exit all right so enable password also enable password to be cisco also so i'll copy that one enable password to be cisco then no ip domain lookup disable ip domain lookup ip no ip sorry no ip domain lookup okay then banner emotd emotd two characters inside the characters you just say no unauthorized access all right so what's remaining here service password inscription to encrypt to encrypt all the passwords service password encryption all right so let me check if i'm leaving anything here hostname console this one banner message all right so guys as you can see i think i have um, uh -huh, then do right okay so i'll copy this one to this switch and for other remaining switches i'll just i'll just uh, i'll just uh, modify the name and copy right so let's do that very fast to save time Okay guys so we are done with the with the layer 2 switches access layer switches so we'll proceed to multi layer switches and for the case of multi layer switches guys and uh, the routers guys we are going to include ssh okay okay all right so how do we configure ssh guys so first of all i'll just uh, paste the commands here i'll just say this is multi layer switch 1 multi layer multi layer switch one okay and i copy and i paste all right so let's proceed to configure ssh the first thing to do when you're configuring ssh make sure the switch has a username Hostname, I mean, not the default hostname, but the configured one, right? And then the second thing is to configure IP domain name, domain name, for example, IP domain name, let's say Cisco.net, okay? Then configure username and password, username, 
username to be admin password to be let's say cisco okay good then after this one you create crypto keys crypto key generate rsa then the modulus length is 10 24 okay all right so like line vty you enter line vty 0 to 15 0 to 15 you say login local to use the local database then make vty login to use only ssh transport input ssh exit exit do right so guys i'll write the commands also on notepad and copy to the switches and the routers all right all right so the first thing is to do is to configure ip domain name let's say cisco.net okay remember we have configured host name here now this is switch material switch 2 we have configured host name so we proceed to configure domain name then username username let's say admin uh -huh. which uh, did i use admin with a to be d capital a or just uh, ju let me just confirm just a minute small small a right okay no problem now so admin admin password to be to be cisco okay then crypto key generate rsa then you hit enter 1024 modulus length okay then enter line vty 0 to 15 login local okay use the local database then allow only ssh to be used for remote access okay transport input input ssh exit the interface and do right so guys i'll copy this to the to the remaining layer 3 switch and the routers so what i'll do is just to modify names here this is for switch 2 which is this one Now for the router, I'll just say this is core router one. Co. R one. Okay, guys so guys you're done here i'm not going to configure isp routers you know i don't have control over the isp routers okay so i will not configure them what i'll just configure for demonstration purpose is just ip address to these interfaces okay but host name and all the rest i won't configure on the isp routers all right so guys also i've forgotten something the version of ssh so let's configure the version of SSH IP, SSH version to be version 2. So do right. That's done. Let's configure version of SSH very fast. IP version, IP SSH version to be version 2. Do right. Okay. Then to the routers also.
okay now we are done now we are done guys all right so we are done with the first step the first step was to configure as you analyze our config steps the first step was to configure basic settings to all devices plus ssh on the routers and layer 3 switches now the second step is to configure vlans and assign ports to the roles of access and trunks on both the layer 2 and layer 3 switches and now i'm going to combine step 2 and step 3 switch port security to finance department when i will reach finance department switch i will configure switch port security okay so guys let's start with assigning vlan numbers okay so what i'll do guys i'll say i'll say this is vlan 10 20 30 40 50 etc etc so let me do that very fast okay now that's done now let's start configuring vlans to sales switch sales department switch okay and remember we need to assign ports role of trunk and access for example when you analyze this switch here all the interfaces that are connected to the layer 3 switches will be trunk ports and all the div all the interfaces that are connected to the devices are access ports so for example this one is fa0/2 and just a minute fa0/1 and fa0/2 so during my cabling it was a pattern for example, this is FA0 slash 1, FA0 slash 2, FA0 slash 1, FA0 slash 2, etc, etc. Okay? Okay. So, I'll just, uh, I'll just click on this switch here and begin configuration. Cisco password, password of Cisco. Enable. Cisco. Alright. So, config T. So, interface range. FA0 slash 1 to 2. The f this one this one and this one okay it's a pattern the two interfaces of all the layer 2 switches that are connected to the layer 3 switches are a phase 0 slash 1 and a phase 0 slash 2 so there must be trunk ports okay all right so switch port mod trunk okay exit now let's create VLAN. VLAN 10 name sales. Sales. Okay. Exit. Now let's assign ports to that VLAN. So for example, from FA0 slash 3, which is this one, to FA0 slash 24, should access VLAN 10. So interface range FA0 slash 3 I mean 2 24. Remember a switch has 24 ports. First Ethernet ports plus 2 gigabit Ethernet ports. Okay? Alright. So we are not going to do anything with the gigabit Ethernet ports. So in this case just first Ethernet ports. But uh, for the gigabit Ethernet ports you can just assign them to another VLAN and shut them down okay switch port mod access then switch port access vlan 10 okay exit do right so guys what can we do with the gigabit ethernet ports let's assign them to another unused vlan which is called vlan vlan 99 name black hole black hole vlan okay exit so interface range gig 0 slash 1 to 2 switch port mode access then switch port access VLAN 99. Okay. Then no 
I mean shut down. Shut down those interfaces. Shut down. All right. Exit. Do All right. So guys, I'm going to copy those commands on Notepad and copy to the remaining layer two switches. Okay. Remember, we are creating two VLANs on each layer two switch. The first VLAN is to access the ports and the to access the usable ports, and the second VLAN is to access the unusable ports. Okay. All right. So let me just do that very fast. I delete those. The first configuration is to configure the first two interfaces to be strong interface range fa0 slash 1 to 2 sorry sorry switch port mod sorry 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 switch port mod trunk exit okay now we go to another range switch port interface range fa0 slash 3 to 24 3 to 24 24 switch port mode access now okay then copy switch port access vlan 20 vlan 20 before that let's create the vlans vlan 20 name let's say this is hr another vlan is vlan 99 which is black hole name black hole okay then exit those in vlan interfaces all right so guys I've created the uh, interface range this one to this one to access VLAN 20 exit then another range should be it should be gig gig 0 slash 1 to 2 okay access VLAN 99 which is black hole all right so do right okay so I'll copy everything and paste to HR switch. And for other remaining switches, guys, I'll just modify the villa the villa number plus the villa name. Okay. For example, it will be villain 30, a name finance, then here access villain 30. But for the black hole villain, it's consistent to all other switches, right? Okay, so I'll go there. And I don't want to sign in using passwords, so I'll just say exit and paste. Right, so that's done. That's done. Then I move to this switch here. I do it very fast. Save time. Okay, guys. So, guys, as you can see, we have configured uh, the VLAN numbers, the VLAN to every department. And, guys, as you can remember, I said I will combine step three, step two, and step three for the case in the case of the finance department. So, I'll proceed to finance department and configure switchboard security. Okay. So, interface range. FA 0 slash 3 to 24. Okay. Switch port. Port security. 
port security then switch port port security maximum maximum to be only one then switch port port security mac address to be sticky command the way it was said here remember here where is it it was somewhere here let me just try to check it out just a minute configure port security to finance and accounts department to allow only one devices to connect switch port use sticky method to obtain mac address and violation mode of shutdown so that's what i'm doing so all of these ports should be accessed using one device at a time okay one device i mean okay then you're going to use sticky method to obtain mac addresses right okay then switch port port security violation mode of shutdown exit do right do show port security all right so as you can see it's there all right so guys i think we're done with step two and step three step two and step three on layer two switches so guys i'll proceed to layer three switches okay so for layer three switches we won't have access interfaces because if you pay close attention to these switches here guys layer three switches they are connected to the switches and the routers okay so any interface that is connected to the layer two switch will be trunk but any interface that is connected to the layer three switches will be a layer three interface and no switch port let's proceed so for intervillian routing that we'll cover later in this project we have to configure vlans so for example we have how many vlans here six vlans 10 to 60 10 20 30 40 50 60 all right okay so we'll configure the six vlans to all these switches layer three switches i mean okay all right so what i'll do i'll just proceed i'll delete everything and configure the first to configure these ports as trunk ports this one and this one okay so let me just identify which ports are this one this one fa just a minute fa 0 slash uh, 3 2 fa 0 slash uh, 8 i believe so just a minute just a minute yes so a phase slash three to eight should be trunk ports okay but this one will be layer three interface of which i will configure later in this project so let's deal first with the trunk interfaces then we configure vlans we create vlans okay so i don't want to sign in using password exit so interface range it's gig just a minute just a minute gig 03 to 08 interface range gig just a minute it's one just a minute 103 okay so interface range gig 10328 okay switch port mod trunk okay exit all right so i'll do the same for the other switch so then switch port mode trunk 
save time. Then I'm forgetting something. I should create villains and name them. All right. So villain, villain ten, name, sales, villain twenty, name, HR. Let me just copy this. We have six villains here. Okay. Villain thirty, name, finance. Villain 40 name admin. Villain 50 name ICT. And finally, Villain 60 name server room. Alright, so exit. Do right. I copy and paste here first good so we have the villains there now let's move to this switch also and configure the re the required interfaces plus the villains exit and i paste okay all right so guys what's remaining let's just go to config steps okay subnetting and ip addressing guys very important very important remember in our case study here in our case study here all devices are in the network i expect to obtain ip addresses dynamically from dedicated dtcp server located at the server room devices in the server room are to be allocated ip address statically okay so we must start with the allocating with manual allocation of devices in the server room okay all right so let's proceed guys let's proceed just a minute i'll open uh, our case study again and uh, this was the base network that was given so we need to carry out subnetting and allocate the correct number of ip addresses to each department guys subnetting takes a lot of time and i've already done that earlier to save time so this is our addressing table okay so for sales department we had this network and this subnet mask remember in sales department we, we had only 120 devices so this subnet mask satisfies the number of required hosts okay in the hr departments this network and the subnet mask and so on and so forth and now on finance department is this network and this certain mask as you can see okay third floor also this network and this certain mask satisfying the number of required devices and finally between the routers and layer 3 switches remember we said the layer 3 switches will provide both routing and switching technologies so we might have, we must assign ip addresses to the layer 3 switch interfaces okay then finally here between the routers and on oh, here should be isps okay we, we we are going to use this one as provided here in the case study this one okay so it's very very simple so what i'll do what i'll do guys i'll proceed to allocate the networks on the net in on our diagram here so for example here was um, let's say net to be 172.16.1.0 slash 25 okay so because uh, in server room we had only the number of required devices were only 12 here as you can see so the subnet mask changed to slash 28 notation okay all right so i'll do to allocate the network addresses to between between the routers and the layer 3 switches i'll do that very fast
So as you can see between the multi-layer switches and the routers, we'll be having these networks as provided here in the addressing table. Okay. All right. So let's proceed to provide the addressing to between the routers and the between the routers, the core routers and the ISP routers. Okay. Using this addressing table. Okay, so guys, it's done. So what's basically is remaining is to assign IP addresses to these interfaces. Okay, so as you can see, our config step was to subnetting and IP addressing. All right, so we need to assign IP addresses to these interfaces of the switch, these interfaces of the switch, and of the routers also. Okay, so I'll start from the switches which is a uh, FA0 slash 1 and FA0 slash 2 okay and uh, you know to assign IP address to a switch a layer 3 switch interface you must make that interface to be a layer 3 interface by default they are switch ports so you must you must make it to be a layer 3 interface so what do you do interface range it's a phase zero slash one to two. Uh -huh. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's gig. I mean, it's gig. Gig gig one zero. Sorry, it's a gig one zero one to two. N just say no switch switch port okay okay so now the two interfaces are layer 3 interface then I come on this side also interface range gig 1 0 1 to 2 no just say no switch no switch port okay do right exit now let's assign ip addresses to those interfaces remember now they are layer 3 interfaces they are routable okay so for example this is gig gig 101 it will take 172.16.3.145 16 now this take one okay yes because subnet mask is slash starting notation so we only have two usable IP addresses okay so the first one is interface gig 101 IP address it's a uh, 172.16 dot 3 dot one four five let me let me check again yes three dot one four five that's okay a separate mask of uh two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five, five, dot two, five two because slash thirty prefix okay then no shutdown exit do right then let's go to the other interface which is gig 102 then IP address will be IP address will be 149 because this is a network so IP address start from 49 149 and 150 okay okay so I make it 149 149 okay then uh, no shut do right okay that's done let's move to this switch so this is gig gig zero two and this is sorry gig zero one so gig zero one 
IP address to be 172.168.3.1 153. Remember this is a network. 152 is a network. 153. Then a separate mass of 255.255.255.252. Okay. No shut. Exit. Then the other interface which is or two IP address will be I'm um, sorry I forgot something here here should be 156 144 148 152 156 so that one will be 157 now this one will be 157 ok no shut do right ok so guys we've assigned IP address to the two interfaces of the layer 3 switch so let's do on the router. I start with this router one, core router one. So interface gig zero zero is connected to which uh, which switch? This one. Interface gig zero zero is connected to this switch, which is uh, IP address will be dot one fifty six one forty six. Okay. So IP address will be. 172.16.3.146 okay because this one took 145 and IP address is 255.255.255.252 no shot exit let's move to this interface gig01 now now gig01 will be gig01 IP address will be gig01 IP address will be 154 because 153 was taken by this interface right now it's 154 154 okay no shot all right guys so let's proceed to configure IP address of today's serial interfaces to the serial interface for example this is serial 2021 and this one is serial 020 so let's start by serial exit interface serial 020 and guys they, these are one of the most important concept here these are serial interfaces with the DCE. Now we have to configure clock rate. If you hover over this interface here, you will see a clock sign. Okay? You will see something like a clock sign. Meaning it's serial DC. So we must configure serial in a clock rate. So let's say clock. Clock rate to be 64,000. Okay? And now IP address will be IP address, a public IP address which is uh, this one. IP address will be that one. Dot one. Seven mass of 255.255.255.252. Okay, no shut. Exit. Now the second serial interface which is that one and uh, clock rate also that one and IP address now IP address will be IP address will be dot five dot five five no shut exit and do that so guys you've we have done we are done configuring IP address to this router here so let's move to this router and finally to these routers here so let's start by gig 00, zero. so gig 00, zero is connected to which router this one gig 00, zero is connected to the first multi-layer switch just a minute yes so it should take IP address of this one which, which will be dot .150 because dot .149 was taken by this interface 
IP address should be 150 standard mask of 255.255.255.252 no shut exit then gig01 is connected to the other switch which will take uh, dot 158 because dot 157 was taken by this interface right okay so it should take 150 158 i mean yeah ip address should be ip address should be should be should be 158 i think let me can verify yes hit enter no shut exit now let's configure ip address to these serial interfaces with the dce which one is this one serial 020 this one is 020 yeah so 020 interface serial 020 ip address should be should be this one dot nine now okay this one is serial 020 yes so ip address should be that one dot nine two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot two five two no shut then clock rate because it's a serial dc interface with a clock rate one two three exit then serial zero two one clock rate first no shut then i pair this okay I pair this will be this one dot thirteen now, okay? Dot thirteen. Do right. Exit. So guys, what I'll do? I said I will not interfere with the ISP routers because I don't have control over them. But for the demonstration purpose. I will just configure IP addresses to these interfaces, okay? And a little bit of routing protocol, let's say OSPF here. Okay, so this one is uh, just a minute. This is serial th 030. Serial 030 should, should have IP address of, uh, I'll just use uh, GU high here copy and I come here and I locate here dot two because dot one was taken by this router's interface and so that mask will be two five two five two that okay then we move to the other interface which will take uh, this one dot ten dot ten Okay, on the subnet mask in that one. And just say do right. Do right. Okay. Then now to this router. Serial 030 is connected to this network, which is this one. So it's will take it will take dot six three zero take dot six this is two five two okay and uh, the remaining of this one will take dot dot fourteen okay because dot thirteen was taken by this one okay dot 14 okay now it's fine do right okay okay guys so guys we are done with the fourth step and now we are going to configure OSPF on the routers and layer 3 switches okay so allow me to close that one first you know, this layer 3 switch is connected to how many networks? 8 networks. 
the six networks of these departments plus the, this one, one and two, those are eight, eight networks, I mean, okay? The first network is this one, one, two, three, four, five, and six, then seven and eight. Also this one, eight networks. So we need to advertise all of these networks, okay? Okay. All right. Exit. The first command, guys, you know, we need this route, layer three switch to carry out routing. The first command is to enable routing, IP, routing. That's, it's, it's enabled now. So we can proceed to configure OSPF. Make the switch aware that it's using OSPF or the routing protocol, route OSPF. Let's use area 10, a network. The first network is this one. Copy. And I paste here. Dot zero. And the wildcard mask of, uh, you know, this is slash 25 notation. Slash 25 notation is equal to 255, 255, 255 dot 128. So 128 minus 2555 is equivalent to 127. So the wildcard mask will be 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 127. Area 0. Okay. Another network will be 128. For this for the for HR department then the second network will be the third network will be 2.0 for finance then 2.128 for admin 2.128 for admin then 3.0 for ICT And now, finally, 3.128 for server room. But now, for the case of server room, it has different subnet mask, which is slash 28 notation. Remember, this add the same subnet, subnet mask of slash 25. Okay? Now, this is equivalent to a wildcard, a wildcard mask of 0 .0 0.0.0.15 because Slash 28 notation is equivalent to 255, 255, 255 dot 240. So 255 minus 240 is 15. So I'll come here and change this one to 15. Okay. Now let's advertise these two networks here. This one and this one. Which is uh, 152 and 153, 156. Copy network I paste that one and now slash start notation wildcard mask will be 0, .0, .0, .0 0.0.0.3 because subnet mask is 255 255 255 dot 252 so now 255 minus 252 is 3 area 0 okay another network is 156 Okay, then we are done now. I think we have adv advertised all the eight networks. So let's proceed to advertise other networks to, to the other switch also. I'll copy, ah, sorry, 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 sorry. I'll try to copy these so that I don't repeat myself. Copy and paste to our notepad here. Now what I do is just to remove this one. Okay, the first configuration that you must do is to enable routing, IP routing, on the layer 3 switch. Then, make the, the switch aware that it's using OSPF protocol with the process ID of 10. Okay. Now, we have to, I have to advertise the networks. And guys, 
I have to add something. I want to add something here. Let's configure route ID. Route ID. Let this one to be 1.1.1.1. One dot one dot one dot, uh, one. Okay. Alright. So. I'll move to this switch. Config T. And paste the two there. All right, so do right exit. Okay, so we have configured route ID to this layer 3 switch and we will do to this layer 3 switch. So these are the networks that you want to advertise on this switch here. But remember, we have not uh, included this one also. So I'll clear, I will include this one also. There are two of them. So I'll come here. Come to the layer 3 switch and copy this one that has dot uh, 3 and paste twice 1 2 and now modify 3.144 and 3.148 144 only that 148 okay now guys we are done we've configured we have enabled uh, routing on that uh, layer 3 switch then OSPF area 10 process ID I mean OSPF with the process ID of 10 then router ID router ID sh now should be 2 2 2 2 2 okay because uh, this one was 1.1.1 one dot one dot one, okay alright so we'll just try to paste exit come here i copy everything then i come and paste so i can see an incomplete incomplete uh, the first one the first one is not complete i don't know why it should be area zero Let me just delete it because it's already here. It's already here, okay? One. Okay, it's fine. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, so guys, we have advertised how many networks? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's done. So what I'll do? Do right. So I move to the routers. This router and this router. Advertise how many networks? four networks this one this one this one and this one okay so what I will do let's say it's three three dot three dot three dot three okay for this router here and we have added advertised how many networks the first one is this one the second is this one 152 152 this one and this one so the third one is this one and dot uh, four so network that one also copy and I paste here then I copy all of this and I paste here to be dot four okay this one this one this one and this one okay 144 152.0.4 okay so do right exit copy now for for the routers we don't need this first command which is ip routing i copy exit and I paste here all right so it's okay then we move to this router here to check how many dots they we need to advertise so this one which is dot eight dot eight then dot twelve also dot twelve and dot one forty eight 
and 156 and now id will be 4 4.4.4.4 copy to this router paste all right so let's move to ISP routers this that is the last thing that I will configure on the ISP routers because we don't have control over the ISP routers we're just doing this for demo purpose okay for SP routers they will only advertise how many networks two for example this one will advertise this one and this one so that to further had you let me do that very fast I will move I will remove this one and make this one 5.5.5.5.5.5.5 and this one dot zero and that is dot eight so let's make this a dot zero the two okay move here exit and paste okay then I move to this one so that one will advertise uh, dot four and dot twelve four and twelve dot four and dot twelve four then yes dot twelve copy and paste okay so guys we are done configuring SPF and I'll just click on the routers to see if there's any adjustments is formed so as you can see these routers as far as formed adjacencies three of them this one is still loading and this switch has formed how many adjacencies two because it's it's the it has this one as the neighbor and this one also this switch how many adjacencies it does not form adjacencies So guys, we had a problem here. As you, as you can remember, when we call, when we were configuring user ID here, router ID, we did that mistakenly, right? Because we we were supposed to do that before advertising the networks. So we are being told here to reload and use clear i clear IP SP process for this to take effect. So what I'll do. I'll just copy this command here or I'll just do it later let me just reload reload do reload yes yes so let's give it time so that it can load and uh, we clear IP or SPF process so that it can take effect Cisco enable Cisco config t do show OSPF neighbor do show IP OSPF it has not formed any neighbor so far let's give it time it's still uh, booting okay so we'll return there some other times remember the mistake that we did was to, was uh, this one we advertised the network before we could uh, configure route id that was a mistake oh i can just do this one first i can just copy do show spf neighbor do clear reset all yes so what I'll do what I'll do we go back to our guide here static IP address to server room devices okay all right so let's go to server room devices and configure static IP address to these devices here so for example this 
they should have this they should take this network here dot 240 or slash 30 slash 28 notation so let's start with our dcp server dcp server will be let it take uh, dot 30 and this one will be 255 dot 240 okay and default gateway will be dot to 129 okay we will configure default gateway on layer 3 switches when we are configuring interval and routing and now dns server this one we want to make dns server to have ip address of dot 131 here okay all right dot 131 okay let's close that one go to this pcme let it have 132 and the ip address uh, submit mass 255.240 the full gateway will be 129 the next server 131 then we go to the next server it should be 131 as we have said 255.240 the full gateway will be 129 Nine. okay and that's just enough i don't need to configure email server now because of time All right okay so let's proceed dcp server dcp server device configuration let's go back to dcp server device configuration to create pools remember to we want to have these devices here while in in these departments to to obtain ip address automatically from this device here okay so i click on dcp server then you come to services then dcp okay enable here then let's create pool pools sales pool and uh, the network was default gateway should be 172.168.1.1 okay DNS server is uh, this one, dot 131. Okay. All right. Okay. So this one, start IP address should be, let's say, dot 6. Okay. A subnet mask of, uh, it was 128. Okay. Maximum number of users, uh, it should be 120. And add. Okay. Sales department, you can see here we have uh, that one, default gate with that one, and start allocating IP address from dot six, sorry, one dot six, one dot six, one dot six, yes, and subnet mask should be one twenty eight, two five five, two five five dot one twenty eight. Okay, all right. So let's move to another pool, which is HR. HR pool HR pool should be 1.128 128 and uh, I mean default gateway should be 129 okay because uh, just let me just show you because 128 was an network so we we'll proceed okay then start providing from 130 let's say 130 130 130 130 136 134 okay hr pool then you had let me check on hr pool again if it's correct dns server is correct okay now let's go to finance pool finance pool should be 2.0 this one 2.0 2.0 and start uh, locating from 1.6 okay and uh, this one is just fine and you had then uh, admin pool admin pool should be 2.129 default gateway then start allocating from 134 okay 
everything remains the same and uh, sorry 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 so this one should be two add then you come to finance here this one should be two save okay all right so let's go to ICT department I believe so ICT department should be ICT pool should be 3.0 3.0 and uh, 3.1 I mean sorry 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 and here should be 3 okay and you had so there's a uh, one place I made error this one is correct it's correct it's correct finance this one is not correct 2.1 should be 2.1 this one is correct this one is correct this one is correct now save then I move to admin pool 2.1 that's correct this one is correct it's air pool this one is correct this one is correct and finally sales pool that's correct okay all right so we have done that we have configured uh, the cp server device now let's do that for let's also do for dns server come to services come to dns and enable that service let's say um, www.gtech.com okay and IP address should be that one and they save sorry 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 add okay okay so that's done we've configured the SCP server we've created how many pools we've created uh, five pools we could not you know server room department we are configuring statically okay all right so let's proceed what's what's next inter -villain routing on the layer 3 switches plus ip dcp helper addresses okay let's do that one very fast we need to configure inter -villain routing on these two switches this one and this one okay all right so i'll start with this one exit all right how do you configure into vlan routing remember we have already created vlans here on this switch so we just say int inter vlan interface vlan 10. okay no shutdown IP address we allocate IP address IP address to be 172.168.16 I mean dot one dot one subnet mask of 255.255.255.128 okay then IP helper address should be IP address of the DCP server okay which is 130 I copy so that's our helper address I paste here okay very simple exit then I'll just open uh, notepad again interface VLAN 10 no shutdown then IP address to be 172.16.1.1 seven mask of 255.255.255.128 then IP help address I'll just copy this one and I paste there okay now that's done we move to VLAN 20 now for interface VLAN 20, the IP address will be 129 here. Okay. Everything remains the same. We copy this also. Paste. Now this is 30. And this is 40. And uh, for 30 it was 2.1. Everything remains the same. And for 40 it was 2.129 everything remains the same okay 
Now, finally, the two villains, villain 50 and 60, 50, we choose um, 3.1, okay? And for villain 60, it was uh, 3.129. Everything just remains the same here, as you can see. And you copy, and you paste to all, of th all these switches, okay? Do right. I go to this switch also and I paste do right so it's very simple inter VLAN routing you just enter the VLAN interface interface VLAN 1 VLAN 10 I mean IP address that interface then you include IP helper address and the address should be the IP address of the DHCP server okay all right So let's see the next step that is uh, there. Okay, wireless network configuration. Okay, this, this one is very simple. That is very, very simple. So for, for example, this is access, sales access point. Let me copy sales access point, part one. SSD should be that one. And uh, password, this one, let's say the same one two three okay no problem then you come to this laptop here for a laptop it doesn't have any wi-fi card now turn off remove the, exist the existing card and drag this one and turn it on again then come to desktop pc wireless connect and uh, refresh we need sales ap sales ap this one you connect and the password is uh, 123 and connect okay it's done come to this tablet config wireless zero ssd is sales ap password is uh, sales ap 123 okay so guys i'll do that for the remaining access points very very fast to save time okay guys so as you can see I've connected all the all the oxy devices to the respective access points and each 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 device is connected to the access point in every department okay all right so we have a problem here but i'll sort it out don't worry so that's done okay so let's proceed configure port address translation plus access control lists all right so we need to configure port address translation plus access control lists. network address translation not okay okay so uh, what did the statement say in the project let me just read it configure part to use the respective outbound router interface ipv4 address implement the necessary acl okay very simple so we are going to configure NAT on these routers here i don't want to configure NAT on the switches i want to just configure the NAT on The routers to use the public IP addresses, right? We are going to use the public IP addresses. Translate private into public IP addresses because it's on the routers here that uh, they have public IP addresses assigned to their interfaces, but not on the layer three switches. Okay. So we we'll start with this router. Click and um, okay. How do we configure part port address? translation or not overload so a peanut inside source access source just a minute let me query source list 
list one access control list one let's just use access control list one then interface interface we're going to use which interfaces serial interfaces this one and this one there are two interfaces so it's serial serial zero slash two and serial zero two one okay serial zero two zero and serial zero two one okay interface serial zero two zero then overload okay then another one is serial zero two one overload because we need to use two interfaces redundancy in the network okay in case this links fail this link fails it will use this one for translation okay all right okay so let's create access control list and permit the various uh, networks access list one permit we are going to permit how many networks six of them this one this one this one this one and this one permit i'll copy this network copy and i paste here permit that one okay hit enter then another one will be 128 access control list permits this network also then another one will be 2.0 another one will be 2.128 another one will be 3.0 then 3.128 then a different subnet mask 128 and the subnet mask will be let me just see here wildcard mask i mean dot 15 15 here now here will be 15 okay all right okay so let's configure interfaces to act as nata inside and nata outside for example on this router here you know this this interface will be accepting traffic in from these networks either of these networks okay and this interface also so this one and this one will be not inside let me expand this one this one and this one will be not inside but this one and this one will be not outside so it's interface gig zero zero so interface gig let's say just a range gig z gig zero slash zero to one ip not ip not inside yes exit and now this one and this one which is serial interface range serial zero slash two slash zero to one it doesn't work so i'll just do it uh, individually i pin it outside i pin it out outside also this one also 2.1 2 slash 1 i pin it outside exit and do right so guys we're just done configuring that there and what you need to do is to copy the configuration that we've done here to the other to the other router here okay so i'll try to copy this one copy so that we can go very very fast so what i remove is just this one Right, and the first one was uh, the first two. This one, this one.
okay so I can proceed to the second router and uh, configure the same exit so I will copy all these copy IP not overload which interface they will they use on this router this one and this one which is 0 0 0 and 0 1 so I copy I paste that one right now let's configure interface not inside and interface not outside so interface range gig 0 0 to 1 IP not inside exit then interface serial 0 slash 2 slash 0 IP not outside and also 2 1 IP not outside exit and do that so guys we've configured not and if I can say do show IP not translations okay we have not uh, we have not uh, do right we have not pinged outside the network we have not pinged outside the network all right so let's see what's next so basically what's remaining is just to verify the configuration guys and before we verify the configuration guys i want us to configure the last thing let's say 10.1.1 so here I'm going to configure default static route. So for example, let's just say this host wants to come to ping a network that is not found on the routing table. How will the routers forward that traffic? So that's the concept of default route so the f in the case of default route guys i'll just pay copy i'll just uh, i'll just write the command and paste in on the routers ip route ip route uh, 0, .0, 0, 0, 0 any ip address with any subnet mask okay should be routed through each interface so let's let's use this as primary gig gig it will be gig 0, 1, 0, and this one is secondary which is gig this one is gig 0, 1, 2 so it should be routed through gig 1, 0, 1 I think that's it yeah 1, 0, 1 that's the primary and now the secondary should be backup should be in case that interface fails okay redundancy two then let's give it a administrative distance of uh, let's say one 150 okay so we can use 150 or just uh, let me just use 70 150 is too much okay so i'll copy this to the two layer three switches this one and this one exit and i paste do right okay do right so i say do right I go to this switch also. Okay. And now let's configure default routes on the two routers. So let's use this one as the as the main active one and this one as the backup. Okay. So what I'll do? 
I'll just change it to be serial 0 slash 2 slash 0 and this one will be copy 2 1 okay for the two letters okay very simple guys then we are done paste thank you here paste all right so we are done guys with everything and what's remaining is just to verify the configuration so we're going to verify the configuration and test con configuration all right the first thing let's test the cp if it's functioning i'll just do this and uh, come to dcp close this one printer also go to dcp okay guys so i've um, enabled dhcp on the devices so i'll just check if they have picked the ip addresses as you can see they have picked the ip addresses the pick ip addresses as specified here and uh, let's check uh, the wireless devices and did the wireless devices pick the ip addresses for example the pc the computer the laptop as you can see it's fine and now let's come here it's fine and now the tablet it's fine it's picked now this one okay and now we have a problem here because you can see this access point I don't know what's wrong with the access point, but I'll just fix it out. But it, as you can see, it has picked IP address. All right, now this one. This one also. DCP is working here. Yes. And then, uh, the what about the laptop here? It has picked. And uh, let's go here. As you can see, it has picked, and uh, PC here it has picked. All right, guys. So let's try to ping. Let's try to ping from this PC to this PC. So ICT PC is uh, the IP address is uh, 3.9. So let me try to ping 3.9. Ping 172.16 I mean dot 3.9 dot let's just give it time see if it's ping okay so that's successful that's good I'll try to test uh, SSH I'll test SSH I'll test SSH on this router let's say this router using which IP address let's use this IP address this one okay so I'll try to access it as a search so as a search iPhone L then username was admin and IP address is this one password Cisco as you can see it's core router one and the banner message no authorized unauthorized access enable then Cisco also all right so guys I think everything is working fine and for the header we had at the, at the finance department we can exclude the port from the port, sec port security remember we were we configured the port to access only one device but you know it's a uh, it's connected to access point so we have to exclude it from port security okay all right so i need to exclude this port fa0 slash 5 so i'll go to fa0 slash 5 and uh, exclu exclude it and say no switch port port security okay then no switch port port security port security maximum maximum one then switch port then no switch port port security mac address 
sticky then no switch port we j we're just going to reverse the, the initial configuration switch port port security port security violation shutdown okay so guys what we've done is just to reverse is to reverse the initial configuration okay all right so let's check it it's still not showing up but uh, i believe it sh it will show up do show start so it's this port this one okay so as, as you can see it doesn't have any switch port port security configuration on it meaning now it's okay it will become okay what i'll do is just uh, interface again let just just a minute this one shut down okay no shut change status so as you can see it will turn green again okay all right so let's just give it time it will turn green okay all right so guys let's try to ping this isp now guys let's try to ping this isp device okay it has ip address let's just take the ip address of any interface this one i'll copy and they use switch one, even this PC to ping it. Ping. It's pinging. Now, being that the traffic has passed either of these routers, then it must be translated. Now let's go to these routers and check if NAT as is working. Do show IP NAT trans translation translations Tra trans tran translation as you can see guys so NAT is working NAT is working inside local the appearance of that device that we used to ping the router was this one and inside global is the IP address the translated IP address okay Outside local is that IP address of the the so there is the, the, the is the as PS, is the IP address of the destination. Okay. All right, guys. So guys, I believe everything is working as expected. And what I'll do, guys, is to make them look beautiful. For example, this is a ISP router. What I'll do? I'll do this one and include cloud there. Place it there. This one also. Do this. Cloud and place there so this one say isp1 isp1 main copy isp2 backup okay all right so what's meaning here What's remaining here actually is uh, nothing. And just to use some, let me just use something here. Okay. So, this one is OSPF. OSPF area zero. We've used OSPF here. OSPF area zero. OSPF area zero okay all right guys so basically I think uh, our project is comp our project is completed and uh, nothing is remaining here so basically guys I think everything is uh, configured and I'll try to check what is remaining OSPF is working successfully as I said, it's working, port, sec port, port security is working, part is working, DCP is working, 
interbillion routing is working and so on and so forth guys this was a long a very long project and it has took us a lot of time and i believe you've learned a lot on this project you've learned how to design a network based on a case study implement that network based on the requirements and to implement several technologies that you've been asked okay all right so that will mark the end of this class suppose you like this project suppose you like this video please like this video subscribe to our channel and drop an encouraging pro comment below thank you so much and let's see you again in enterprise networking project 7 bye guys and see you